Well, hello. Um, we're going to talk about how to make technology your new BFF today, and our hope is that by the end, that um, technology is the John C. Riley to your Will Ferrell by the end of this today. Okay, I'm Lacey Snyder, and I am teacher librarian at South Prairie in Grimes, and it's a K-5 building. Mm -hmm. My third year. And I'm Melissa White. I'm the instructional coach in the building um, at South Perry. I am a former teacher librarian, though, and before that, a former English teacher, high school English teacher. So I've worn a lot of hats. Um, and it's interesting because Lacey, when I became an instructional coach, Lacey took my spot and I became her mentor. And that's kind of where our relationship started when we started working together. Yeah. And um, one of the ways that we use technology is to connect through teachers, to connect with teachers in our building. And we do a video newsletter called Let's Talk About Teaching, where we create videos for teachers just on different things with um, teaching and learning. And so to get us started today, so you can kind of get a look at what we're like, we just have a couple little clips from those videos to get us started today. Because we know it's right before lunch and you're kind of tired. This might wake you up a little bit. <laughs> you can see a little bit about what we're about. Um, oh. oh. <laughs> Got it. Okay, we're ready. Yeah. Hey guys. Hey y'all. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. <laughs> hey everyone. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> you're on fire. Oh, we're on fire. Yeah. Dance break. Okay. <laughs> Lots of me yelling. <laughs> okay. All right, so we have three tech tools that have become our BFFs um, over the last few years. The first one's Pick Collage and then Flipgrid, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about digital breakouts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this me? That's oh, yeah. You. Okay, so Pick Collage. I think I heard Travis talking about it. Is your name Travis? No. My name is Travis. Oh, yeah. Did you mention Pick Collage? It wasn't Travis. No. no. Oh, it was, it was you. Carrier. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, same table. So, Pick Collage, you can create um, photo grids and collages. You can custom out the layout, customize the layout, and add text, um, stickers. You can change the background, um, all kinds of things. And a new feature that I learned about yesterday is you can draw. Doodle, there's a doodle mm -hmm. feature, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so when using technology, um, one thing that Lacey and I really believe is that you need to be playful and like play around with the tool when you first learn it, let the kids play around with it. You need to be flexible because we know that sometimes it doesn't work the way that you want it to, and so you've got to kind of change things on the fly and be reflective. And so sometimes you have to do that all in one day. And so when we decided we wanted to try pit collage with a group of kindergartners, we just um, brought out a camera and we just videotaped us teaching the lesson. Um, and the nice thing about being, and we call them encore teachers in our building, but being an encore teacher is like Lacey would see four kindergarten classes in a row, and so you do the same lesson one after the other. And so we were able to teach it, reflect in between, teach it, reflect in between, teach it. So what you're going to see in just a second is um, a video where we went through and we talked about how the lesson went and how, like, the first time we did it, it was kind of like this, and then we <laughs> talked about it and it was a little bit better. And so we took the video clips of us teaching and we put it together in a video for the teachers in our building. And so we thought we'd play that for you today so you can just kind of see pit collage in action and we also talk about how to use it. Um, just now we made this video last December when it was the holiday time. Um, and so we're wearing really obnoxious glasses. Holiday glasses. glasses part of it. We also use, was it Screencastify? Cast yeah, screen? our like video making skills were pretty low a year ago. so. Yeah. There's a lot of extra stuff, but it's all good. <laughs> We're going to show you the tech lesson in action and what happens when it goes well and what happens when it... So that was really fun getting to go around the school and take pictures. I was taking pictures of Christmas decorations. And I took pictures of shapes. And you can really do anything with your students. That's the great thing about Pick Collage. It'll work for really any topic. But once you have taken the pictures, you're going to go to the app and Pick Collage. And this is my iPad that's wiggling around right now. Oops. 
No. <laughs> go into Fit Collage and then go to Grids and it'll let you choose the pictures that you would like to use. There's a check mark in the top corner. It gives you all these different choices at the bottom for how to do the layout. And I can do this all day. So Lacey has one already set up. I picked my shapes. I just need to add one more. So I click on the empty square, click photos, and then I can pick my shape. And I want to use the squares. Mm -hmm. Check mark. Mm -hmm. I can adjust the picture how I would like it. Mm -hmm. Now I need to add my words down at the bottom. There's that little plus. And then I'm going to click text. And that's where I can type in my shape. I can move it wherever I like it to be. So then how do kids turn it in? They go down to the corner, the little square, mm -hmm. and you can save to library, right? Yep. The kids can go to their pictures and airdrop it yep. to you. So after using Pit Collage, on that very day, we decided to try it out with kindergarten. We wanted kindergartners to teach us how to build a snowman mm -hmm. using Pit Collage. The first time we did it was a nightmare. Awful. We decided they'd have the kids come in. We had everything ready at the tables, the paper, the iPads, and we were going to do it all together, start step to finish. Step by step. Because we did that, okay. they would get finished with one step really, really fast while other kids needed help. Yeah. They would start wrestling and because become off task. Because what else are they going to do if... They don't know what to do next. Yeah, or they're done. Wrestle. <laughs> Kids had to wait a lot to get their questions answered. Right. Because if they didn't know the answer, they couldn't ask the person next to them because they didn't they know the didn't answer. Know and either. then they're just, bless their hearts, raising their hand for forever. We didn't think to talk about updating, how not to do that. So that was kind of an issue with some iPads. And then we didn't tell them how many pictures to take. So some of them were taking a hundred pictures of one, the same Literally thing. one step. One, the yeah. second time we did it went a lot better. So what we decided <laughs> to do the next time is start the kids on the carpet. We were going to model exactly what to do. Lacey drew the snowman under the Elmo so they could see step by step. I drew one step of the snowman and then we stopped, took one picture and we were very exaggerated about everything. And we could show them how to hold the iPad to take a picture so you get, get the whole something. paper and not just a little bit. We used Reflector to walk the kids through how to create their pic collage, mm -hmm. select the pictures, put them in order, add stickers, text. We did all of that at the carpet. Mm -hmm. Then we got them all jacked up. Woo! They're ready to go. Mm -hmm. They were so excited and ready. And then we sent them on their way. And they know what to do. And if they don't know, then they can ask the person next to them. Mm -hmm. And then another cool thing we did is when they were done taking the picture at their table, we had them go to the carpet to use the app. Then we could get a good visual view of which kids were in what spot. We had kids <laughs> who were done early because they're always like, yeah. I'm done. What do I do now? And we said, well, now you're an expert and you can go help your friends. And they really like doing that. Last thing is when kids were done, rather than have them share it with us, airdrop it, any of that. We just had them hold up the iPad. We snap their picture with a smile. That way they're able to share their work with you in a pretty easy way. Later you could use Reflector and show all the pictures like this that you took mm -hmm. and that could be how the students share with the class. It'd be really easy just to email out to parents or post it on the Facebook page. And the thing is the more the kids use the technology the better they yeah. are. It's problem solving themselves. Mm -hmm. It just felt like it was easier every time. It was awesome. Yeah. I like that video because it shows teachers that even if it fails, you just make a couple small adjustments and then just try it again. It's no big deal. Yeah, it's Pickles not a big terribly. deal. <laughs> you can just try it again. And so um, we've used pit collage quite a bit in our building, and so I think the next slide is going to share a couple different ways that we've used it. Yeah, this is um, these are examples how I've used pit collage. The kindergarten ninja drawings is a way that I share. I made a pit collage and shared that out on Twitter. It's just student work after we read three ninja pigs and the middle one is we did a scavenger hunt after we read a story and that was um, a pic collage that a student created and then the one on the right I shared on Twitter and um, my library's Facebook page and that's sharing like what students are learning about. Mm -hmm. So it's nice because it can be a teacher tool just to create visuals to put out there on social media to share what you're doing in your classroom, but then kids can also use it too. Um, we had some kindergarten classes do scavenger hunts throughout the building around Valentine's Day looking for different shapes, so that was fun for them. Um, we've used it with teachers having them create pit collages as, as like a contest in our building. We gave away emoji pillows. Emoji pillows. For that That's one. what I was screaming about in the yeah. excitement for the video. contest. Um, and so it's just, it's a nice easy um, tool to start with if you haven't used technology in the classroom kids pick up on it pretty quickly yeah and mm -hmm. it was easy for kids to airdrop it to me they are um, second graders but I don't know why kindergartners couldn't have figured that out too so it was pretty easy to 
for them to yeah. share. And like you saw at the end of the video, you know, they just want to share it with somebody. So sometimes if you just say, hold it up, let me snap your picture, yeah. then they kind of get that out of their system and they feel like they've shared it. And then you can share those pictures with teachers. Mm -hmm. And that way you don't have to worry about them sending it to you or anything. Yeah. It's just a picture of their picture. Super yeah. simple. Any questions about pit collage before we move on? Okay. Okay. <laughs> So the next one we're going to talk about um, is Flipgrid. Um, Flipgrid is a video discussion platform. It's a super easy tool to navigate. Um, it works on lots of different kinds of devices. But basically, as an educator, you create a grid, you add topics, and then your students can respond with short video messages. Um, we've been working with Flipgrid for about a year, and we've used it in lots of different ways that we'll share with you today. Um, I think we're going to play a very short video for you, just kind of giving an introduction to Flipgrid and what it's all about. Was your New Year's resolution to use more technology in your classroom? Uh-huh. Do you want to inspire student voice? Yeah, definitely. Do you have questions? Do you want answers? Of course I do, duh. Do you want to spark ideas and fuel conversations? Absolutely. Do you want something kid-friendly and grown-up-friendly? That sounds great. Then you need Flipgrid! Yay! I've been reading the Iowa Goldfinch books with kids in library. And I wanted to try Flipgrid in the classroom with some students. You so put, we did. We did the two ideas together, uh -huh. and it was great. Here's what we asked them. What is your favorite Goldfinch book so far, and why? And then they're going to click the green button to add a response. Here we are. Blah, 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 because blah, 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 blah. the finished product looks like this. I like Red Clown Life Blue because everyone thinks he's actually red. That's Flipgrid. Try it out and share with us. It's super simple. No, no. Help me. Okay. <laughs> All right, so these are just some examples. Flipgrid can be used with, like at any level and for any topic. Um, these are the book recommendations I've used in library, the roller coaster challenge. There's lots of STEM ideas and science, and they have this um, whole discovery section now in Flipgrid. And I found the Mission Possible Fitness. So I thought that was really fun. Symbols. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Homer's actually a GIF. He's like walking. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. This reminded us of the leveled thing that you had with your plagnets. So I just could see the two that's kind of meshing yeah, together yeah. somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this again? is my mm -hmm. example of a fifth grader doing a book recommendation. Hi, my favorite book is Hatchet. You should definitely read it. It's a super good book about a boy that gets stranded on an island. He has to survive and get off the island using his resources. Go read it now! Um, he was enthusiastic. <laughs> um, Flipgrid's great because I didn't really give them any direction other than talk about a book that you love and want to recommend to other people, and they got really creative with it. Um, and then kids can go and watch the other videos, and they can respond, and it just creates another space for authentic conversations to happen, which is really fun. The and kids then I, really love Yeah, it. and then love they can, it. through the whole year, they can go back and look at these and look at recommendations, which I really like a lot. Yeah. Another way you can use Flipgrid is to connect with families. And so last year, we have an art show every year um, for our school. And last year, the art teacher and I teamed up, and she wanted a way for kids to explain why they chose the piece of art that they chose and kind of tell their favorite thing about it. And so um, we had the kids stand by their piece of artwork that was hanging in the hallway, and then we created a video of them talking about their artwork. And um, this is my son, so we can play him talking about his, his artwork. This is my um, painting because dolphins are one of my favorite animals and, and turtles are. So, and I tried the hardest that I could on this. And what turned out being the really cool thing about this is there were parents who weren't able to be there because, I mean, life gets busy. And so then, and they were like, oh, no, I forgot it was this Alpre art show. And we were able to tell them, hey, here's a link. You can see your students not only talking about their artwork, but you can see the artwork in the picture. And then um, 
you know, families that were out of state, other people could see it. And this just really turned out to be a really powerful thing that was bigger than we ever thought of. Like, yeah. we just wanted kids to reflect and talk about their artwork, and then we realized the audience was just never ending, and that was really, really powerful. And yeah, to see. it was it worth added it. added another element to the art mm -hmm. show. The next way we've used it, used Flipgrid is with staff. So I'll have yeah. to talk about that. Um, and so last year we, um, we created a video where we um, had staff share ways they were using Flipgrid in their classroom. And so we just created a grid called DCG Flips. And the teachers could post different ways that they were using Flipgrid in their classroom just to get ideas out there. And it was just kind of fun because we had a lady from Georgia post on there mm -hmm. how she was using it. And that was fun to see. Um, another thing is at the beginning of the school year, you know, we have those professional development days before school starts. I wanted to plan something kind of special for our teachers because we went from a K-2 building to a K-5 building this year. And so we had so many new staff and just lots of different things to learn about the building and about where things were. And I didn't want to, we didn't want to talk to them while they were sitting in a chair for hours and hours. So we created an amazing race for them. And so we put them in teams and then they had a list of tasks that they had to um, accomplish throughout the day. And so um, this is just a picture of a team. And w at each station, they had to um, post something in a grid talking about maybe it was what they learned or posting a video of, um, like for this one, they had to post a video of them in their tornado and their fire spot so that we knew that they found where those were. I mean, that sounds silly, but we, before school it starts, you should know. You should so know where your spots it. are. And so, yeah. and the nice thing was we could then go back and watch and make sure that teachers had accomplished these tasks. They could post questions. And it just made it so that the principal and I could be there even though we weren't there in mm -hmm. different spots. And it was a really great team building activity for teachers. Um, it was really fun just to go back and look at all the pictures that they did. Um, and we got a lot of stuff accomplished. I mean, they read the handbook. They were able to visit different areas of the school. Um, and it was also just a way for them to get to know each other. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. Does anyone have anything to add about Flipgrid? Have you used it? Or do you have questions? Yeah. So do you guys have a Flipgrid for your school, like just one that you can add to? Or how does that work? You can do it that way mm -hmm. if everyone has the same login. But um, you just make an individual teacher account. And I think there's a limit. The free account, there's a limit on how many. Or you can have one grid, but unlimited topics. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so each, in our school, yeah, most know. teachers have their own Flipgrid account that they use with students, and they'll just have, if you have the free version, you just have kind of one board, but you can put as many topics as you want under it. Um, and to your whatever. How do you oh, for this? Oh. I just gave them. Here, we can, can go to it. Yeah. Do we link it? Um, so we just gave them a code. So like I named it like the uh, South Curry Amazing Race was the name of the grid. So they just went to flipgrid.com slash spamazingrace. Yeah. So, so this, this is, is the grid, and then each of these are the topics. And you, this is where you can put like a GIF or a picture, or it can be you asking a question. Um, and then to answer, they just click on it, and then they p click the plus mm -hmm. to respond. So they have their own login, but they're getting into your Flipgrid. Well, for this, you just like, you can enter the code. You can do it on your phone. You could do it on an iPad. You just Any put device. in the web address. Yeah. yeah. Or you can scan the or QR just, code or whatever. It's super easy. So they don't have to log in or anything, which is really nice. Yes. So you guys are using the paid version for free? Um, I have a We're paid, ambassadors. So, so we have we have the But most of our paid. teachers are using the free version. Mm -hmm. And they're very happy with it. The nice thing about the paid version is just you can have unlimited boards. Grids. But yeah. I think our teachers are kind of getting around. Yeah. It's just that. different. Each topic would be different. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, our last one we're going to talk about um, Breakout EDU. Has anyone used Breakouts or done one? Yeah, sort of. So, Breakout EDU, do you want to talk about the. So, has anyone ever done a breakout room? Yeah, yeah or an we're escape room. Or an escape room. It's the same idea. And Breakout Edu came up with essentially a kit that teachers can order, and it's a box, and it comes with like five different kinds of locks. So it has uh, maybe a directional lock, a four-digit code, a three-digit code, the key lock, and then on Breakout Edu's website, they have all these different games that teachers can bring to their classrooms, like different themed games, where essentially the kids have to figure out how to unlock all the different locks and escape out. 
And so then the clues are hidden around the room and the kids have to go around and figure it out. And it's a lot of fun, mm -hmm. but logistically as a teacher, especially of younger kids, it's hard to have a class of kindergartners all trying to unlock one box. It just, you know, they're yeah. running around. And so um, they've now come out with a digital version of a breakout that we'll show you in just a second. But um, either way, you can go to the Breakout EDU's website and you can see their actual like lockbox games, but you can also see the digital games, which is something new yeah, that we learned about. Yeah, the digital on the Breakout website is still like developing. They're still in the process, but they have a few examples that people have made. Um, but then they're developing like, this is an example from the Breakout site of a color lock. So it would, it'll be more like official and easier. Um, the nice yeah. thing about the digital version is every kid in the room can be working on it at the same time. Or it can be like an individual, if you like in the library, if you have study hall, one person can come in and work mm -hmm. on it. It doesn't have to be just the actual physical box. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, like sometimes the lock won't work or sometimes they can't, you know, there's just different things that maybe don't work logistically with the actual physical box in your hands, which is why the digital version is pretty cool. And so we learned about the digital breakouts at iTech this year, and so we took it back to our building and wanted to try it out. And so I tried it with a, um, fifth grade students, and these were fifth graders who, during the month of October, had read a mystery book. And so if they read a mystery book, that was their genre of the month. They got to come to the library and have like a celebration. And so their celebration was that they got to do a digital breakout called Catch the Bus. And they worked with partners, and we gave them, it was about 30 minutes. It was like 45. It was, yeah, it was supposed to be 30 <laughs> minutes, but um, <laughs> it was a hard one. The thing about fun. the digital breakouts is they don't give you an answer key. So as a teacher, you have to figure out the answers for yourself. Um, which is sometimes embarrassing when you realize we that struggled. <laughs> we struggled with this one and solving one and um, and then we realized it was something simple mm -hmm. which is good because it's good to see that you know teachers struggle and sometimes have trouble unlocking things but the nice thing about the digital breakout is there were four locks for the kids to unlock and some partners only got through two and they were they celebrated that hey we unlocked two locks mm -hmm. and some got through all four um, but the nice thing about this is when you do the breakout actual box, it, there's only one box in the room, but this way it created essentially a box for every kid. Um, so they could all be working on it at the same time. And it was super engaging. I think there's ways to connect this to any kind of curriculum. Um, you could do anything. Yeah. It can be as easy or hard as you want it to be. Mm -hmm. any, it could be anything, which yeah. is awesome. So okay. we have one that we yeah. want you to try. We're gonna so do if it. you have a computer, um, we want you to try, and we're going to give, we'll probably set the timer for about five minutes. But um, it's called, we made one called Turkey Time Digital Breakout. We try to make it pretty simple and easy to navigate, but we have the. So I'll leave that, I'll leave this link showing, but when you get there, um, the Google form is like your locks, and it'll kind of give you, like you can see R equals red, O is orange, all caps, no spaces. It'll give you those little hints, and then when you've gotten it right, it'll. Like when it's wrong, it'll be red, and then when you have the right um, thing in to unlock the lock, it'll be white. So that's how you know when you have that lock right. And there are hidden links on the turkey, so you just have Don't to tell like, them. well, yeah, you have to <laughs> like move your mouse around and look for it to change the finger, and mm -hmm. there's other clues. So. Is the bitly working? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so we're just gonna give you some time to try okay, to go for it. Yeah. Try to solve it and figure it out. When, I, when we did this with fifth graders, we released a clue every five minutes just to help yeah. them out. Especially when we could feel the frustrations. Like, I'd say, like, hey, I'm going to announce a clue to try to help you guys yeah. out. And it was their first one, so yeah. they had so many questions, which we couldn't answer. <laughs> Didn't answer. So have you guys created other ones on Google Forms? That's the first one we created, but we're going to show you We're going to show you how we did it, so then you can see. But it is, and then the... The website has a couple made. Um, yeah, and that's the one I did with fifth grade. So are all the, all the breakout any digital ones on Google Forms? Um, or do they have their own? They're on the Google site and then the Google Form, but yeah. yeah. But they don't give you an answer key, so you've got to solve it before you do it with the kids. Well, I like this because you can plug in whatever you want. It's not it related to what the actual it. locks are, like on a breakout yes. EDU. It doesn't have to be like directional or, yes. you know, whatever. Uh -huh. And I, the one that I did um, at iTech, they had directional, and just on the top of the Google form, they were like, we're taking you up, up, 
in a way, and so like up, up was, that was the first two directions, and I totally missed that, but. <laughs> that's the one that was hard for us that's on fun. the bus one, was the directional, the directional one. That one was, we can yeah, pull that one up. figure out a directional mm -hmm. one myself, so mm -hmm. I just didn't do it. <laughs> Should we solve it? Do you want to go to the Bentley and solve it? Yeah, we can do yeah. that. Walk through it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm muted. Okay, so is everybody okay with us going through the answers? <laughs> They're fine with yeah, that. Yeah, that's Okay, on. so there's two hidden links on the turkey on his feathers. And the first one is a puzzle, and the word um, is November, so that's for the word lock. And the other one talks about the Mayflower. So this one gives you the year 1620. And that's the number lock. Mm -hmm. And then the color lock is from this crazy little turkey Jeff down here. <laughs> His colored feathers, red, yellow, orange, green. That's it. And then you broke out. Yeah. Do you want to show yeah. how we built it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you build a, um, the digital breakout, you build it in Google Sites, which is where you just get it started. And the new Google Sites is so easy to navigate. Mm -hmm. So we just started with the site. And then I think the second thing, um, I made the form. Mm -hmm. And that's where I kind of had to decide what kind of locks I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and then this turkey is a Google drawing. So, oh, I can't. How do I go to him? You might need to like make it. in my drive. Oh, there here it go. is. So I just found this picture, and the links, I just insert a shape, and then I attach a link to the shape. You want to show how to do that? Because that was the hardest part for me when I was making one yeah. the first time was to So shapes right here, make another turkey feather. Okay, and then I want to make it transparent, all that crazy stuff. I think for like, if you only have iPads and you wanted to do this, you would need to leave a line or something so that they would know where to click because you can't just scroll your mouse over. Yeah, it doesn't turn into the hand you like it know. does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so or you could have a word line. on there that they have to click on. Yeah, so now that I have my shape, there's this little link button right here, insert link, and that's where you, that's how you add a link. When we released clues to the students, that was a big one. It was like, look for the hidden link at the top of the page, you know. Right. Um, and this is hard for kids because they want the answer kind of right away. And sometimes if they're not finding it right away, that was hard for them, which yeah. is why we had them partner up because we thought if they had two heads working on it. There was lots of, should I click on this? Should I do this? Or mm -hmm. we're like, oh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go to the digital breakout page so we can show them just what games are on there? Um, yeah. Google it. Good librarian skills. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so they have samples. That I gave up on all of these, but um, <laughs> they have locks, ABC, directional color, and it has a timer. So I think eventually you'll be able to create your own on the breakout EDU site mm -hmm. like this, which will be nice. That you can use. But Google Sites is really easy, too. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know where I found the examples on their website. Do you remember? No, but if you search for Catch That Five <laughs> under games, maybe. There's digital games right there. Oh. Yeah. Are they just under? Just click on more. Help Spidey save That's his Halloween it. is a new one. I know. Is that all they have on there? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes. They just last week changed their website. Did they? And okay. And switched um, to a subscription <coughs> plan. Oh. But all the games you're talking about are still found on a separate website. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking. 
in the, okay, that's good I to know see. because, yeah, that's changed. Yeah. Since then. This is the one that I did with fifth grade called Catch That Bus. I thought it was really age appropriate for them. Um, I could see doing it with third, fourth, and fifth, but it looks kind of like ours did. Um, there's some hidden locks in there. There's some pictures at the bottom with hidden links. This um, one was hard. The hardest <laughs> one was the map, the directional lock. Um, it was hard for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they have links like this is a link in the text which I think makes it easier. I don't know where the other one, this one, bus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions about the digital breakouts? So this, this is the one you clicked on from the digital, yes. the actual breakout EDM. Yes. So all there. It was there, already there, made, already done. done. Um, well, they just have, like they just have pre-created sites mm -hmm. and they put yeah. all that stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they, like it's made the same with Google Docs and they, they have a I puzzle. got the puzzle idea from them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and did this one have, um, oh yeah, why did Ava make a map? And they have to answer questions in a Google mm -hmm. form. And then once they get through like three questions, at the end of the Google form, it gives them It takes a them to a to link. A clue. Yes. Yeah, so there's some comprehension so there, which is neat. Yeah. You can put in some content there pretty easily. And we have um, two or three breakout kits in our, two breakout, like the actual boxes in our school, and we've used those with success. I just like this as an alternative for teachers to have, too. This would work better for me in the library because I don't have time in between classes to, like, reset locks mm -hmm. and do a breakout back-to-back. -back and But if they're just on a device, I can do it back-to-back. -back, yes. So. Mm -hmm. makes it possible for me. Yeah, it's and the cool. way, with the actual box, the way we've gotten around like having a whole class do it is we'd have like tables come up and solve the different locks. And so we've done that before. Yeah, that's worked well. With the kids. Yeah. Okay. I don't cool. know how to get back to the presentation. It's right here. Okay. I got it. Okay, so we're going to end with um, how to make technology your new BFF. We've got a couple different steps that you can follow to um, help make this happen. Um, our biggest um, piece of advice is to team up. Um, a lot of my work as an instructional coach is helping teachers incorporate technology into their classrooms because a lot of times when you're doing something for the first time it can be scary. And so just having someone, whether it's an instructional coach, or I know sometimes Lacey does that with teachers, helps them with technology, is just have, teaming up with someone so you've got an extra set of hands in there, um, an extra set of eyes. Um, yeah. It's just nice to have, especially when you're doing technology with little ones, just to have another person in there. Um, you, can, you saw like from our video that reflecting about how it went is super important. Um, just to have a person to talk through, okay, this is how it went, this is why it went well, this is what didn't went well, what can we change for the next time that we use it. Um, you can divide and conquer, whether you divide and conquer the room. I think the best thing that we did with like the pit collage example is we said, okay, kids, when you're done, you're going to go to the carpet. So one of us could station ourselves yeah. at the carpet while the other one was kind of walking around helping people that weren't quite done yet. And I think once you did that with kids and they would know, the next time maybe you wouldn't need the other person in the room because you kind of get them in the routine. Um, and it's just a safety net. Like if you're going to fail, it's nice to fail with somebody <laughs> rather than by yourself. Yeah. I mean, so it's nice to kind of have That's someone else scary. in the room and that you can kind of make eyes with like, oh my gosh, this Ooh. isn't working. <laughs> like I know the first time we did the digital breakout, um, Google Sites was blocked for our students. So they couldn't get to it. So we had 45 fifth graders in the room ready to go and we got them all pumped up, ready to go. And then they Nothing all logged in works. and clicked on it and they couldn't get there. And it was, yeah, you know, so if you're going to fail, you want someone else there with you. Yeah. Um, and then we quickly figured out what we need to do and then we just did it the next, the next day. But I think teaming up is that, like number one piece of advice. Yeah, for sure. Do. Okay. The next thing is use like technology shouldn't replace anything. It should just enhance what you're already doing. So um, my example is with our scavenger hunt. We saw that one pit collage picture earlier. Um, some kids did it, they did the scavenger hunt just with a paper and a clipboard. And then I had some kids, um, they did the scavenger hunt with the iPads and took pictures and did it that way. So I didn't really change anything. I just like mm -hmm. enhanced what I was already doing. And then the example I have of the kid here, it's kind of hard to see, but um, I was doing a science lesson with a teacher and we had them make seeds and then they were standing in a chair and dropping seeds down. Um, and they all wanted to kind of watch each other's. And then so we decided kind of last second, well, why don't we videotape them dropping their seeds so then we can play back and show parents like how the seeds fell. Because it was a mystery science lesson 
and they didn't want the seed to fall in the zone of darkness, the <laughs> shade, because that means the seed wouldn't grow. So they were, you know, all wanting to watch each other, but they couldn't because they were all doing their own. So we decided just to take an iPad and videotape the kids dropping their seeds, and then we did those in slow motion because every kid loves to see themselves in slow motion. <laughs> I mean, it's so fun. And so that was just a way that we took the lesson that was already going on with only one device, and were able to kind of create something that the kids thought was pretty cool. Um, and then the teacher went back and showed them the very next day. Okay, the other th um, piece of advice we have is just to choose one thing. I know every year when I go to iTech, if you've never been to the technology conference, I always leave with 100 ideas, and I want to do everything, and I don't know where to start, and then I get overwhelmed, and I don't do anything. And so it's nice just to pick one thing. So like this year, we picked the digital breakouts as kind of the one thing that we wanted to try um, and get to know. And when you're getting to know that one thing, kind of learn the ins and outs of it. Like, try it on your own as a teacher tool. Try it with the kids and let the kids play around with it. Um, try it in all different kinds of lessons. And I will say the first time you use technology with kids, make it something really low stakes. Like, just play. Or like, take a picture of yourself and add one word. Right. Like, don't make it tied to content. Don't make it tied to something that's too high stakes, because then that just adds a level of pressure there. And you, want, yeah. you don't want the kids to not succeed because they didn't understand the technology. So um, just try it in all different ways. Um, and also see like what ideas and support you can find online. Like Chelsea said with Seesaw, there are so many great things for teachers on there if you just dig a little bit, like professional development things, things teacher tools that they can use. There's webinars out there for lots of these different things you've heard about today where you can go and just watch and learn um, different ways to use it. And so just kind of look on social media um, or look on their website just to see different ways to use it. Um, when we made this video that you saw earlier about Flipgrid, that's kind of how we became Flipgrid ambassadors as they saw that video. Um, and then we got lots of fun free stuff. And <laughs> now we have Flipgrid for free because when you become an ambassador, they pay your subscription. And all you have to do is share out Flipgrid with other people, which you can do through Twitter, um, in your own school. And that's just, um, most of these companies want to support teachers. And they want teachers to use it and love it. And so if you do pick your one thing, just reach out to the company and kind of see what they can send you because we got yeah, stickers and t-shirts <laughs> and all kinds of things. So um, that piece of advice, just choosing one thing is I think just really powerful because I think anyone can just choose one thing and try yeah, it. Just try one. Try it out. Just one little thing. And then just share out how you're using it yeah. with other people. Okay. And then I think this is our last piece of advice mm -hmm. is you can just use technology as a celebration or a special occasion like with the fifth graders. Um, if they read a mystery book, then they got to do the breakout, which is kind of a fun thing. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> like holiday scavenger hunts, like so if you, yeah, like if you don't know where to start, just say, hey, what's the next holiday? Thanksgiving. That's how we picked our digital breakout idea yeah. was the turkey time. We were like, what are we going to make it about? Okay, well, it's fall, Thanksgiving, and then make it, and then maybe that could be a way that you start. So maybe it's not tied to content, maybe it's just a celebration for kids mm -hmm. um, or a special occasion. Like Chelsea said earlier, GIFs are really fun to watch. Yeah. You can't take your eyes off. Like, I could watch him do this. And make. We've made a few of our own. It's fun. We have learned how to make GIFs and use yeah. them in that way. Okay. Um, I just like this a lot. A lobster grows um, a bigger shell when the old one becomes too comfortable. So um, growth comes from, like, trying new things, and you might feel a little uncomfortable, but it's okay. <laughs> if it bombs okay just try again that's the biggest no thing I've deal. learned from working with Lacey is she always says why not like let's just try it let's just do it and if it fails it's not a big deal it's not the yeah. end of the world and so that's been really good for me because I'm more of like a and I need to have like, it planned out word out. for word and I need to know exactly what's going to happen and, and like, like have lots kids, of safety nets <laughs> kids already like halfway through something and I'm like no no stop let's do this yeah. and yeah. we're just going to dive in and try it mm -hmm. okay and then I think our last slide we just oh, have, us. yeah, we post um, videos on YouTube um, maybe monthly, sometimes more often than that. So um, we can follow our channel. It's called Let's Talk About Teaching. Um, and we, when we started the video channel, we only talked about technology. We yeah. were just like sharing different tech tips and tech tools because that's how it started for the teachers in our building. And then we realized we had a lot more to say than just about technology because really it's all like this. It's all integrated. And so we just talk about different teaching things. Um, and there's our Twitter handles down there, too. And I think that's all we have, unless people have questions.
All right, let's give them a hand. Oh, I like your <laughs> ring. That's our video. Thank you so much.